I think that's a bad way to go at it. It cost me a lot of frustration. It cost me a lot of money, a lot of bad tournaments. But now that I know, I like, since God, since you told me, you showed me the light, I'm going to tell everybody about it because there, there is a better way to do it, especially for you younger guys. It's a little different for us that are older. Um, or if you just want to go out and just have fun, it's a little bit different process. But if, even if it's just one person in here that wants to learn how to, to be a tournament fisherman, I promise you this, is, this will save you a lot of frustration. We can go to the next slide here. It's really important to be a specialist. People will try to fight you when I say this, when I say you got to be a specialist, you got to be a specialist. No, you got to be versatile. You got to be versatile. You got to be able to do this. Listen, a lot of times when we think about versatility, we think you got to know how to use every bait that's ever been created. That's not the only way that versatility is packaged. David Dudley, that man knows how to catch a fish on a wacky rig in Florida, Oklahoma, Africa, Australia. He could catch him on a wacky rig anywhere. Kevin Van Dam has caught more fish on a crankbait. I remember there was a tournament, it was either on Grand, I think it was Grand Lake, and everybody was catching them, like throwing jigs at spawning fish and stuff. Kevin Van Dam was throwing a 2.5 and caught him. He was good at a crankbait. Think about all the tournaments you saw Kevin Van Dam do very well in. He was throwing a reaction bait. He, had a, he was a specialist. He caught them everywhere he went, but he used a specific tool. Versatility isn't only about knowing how to use every tool in the box. Versatility is taking a bait, taking a technique, taking something you have confidence in, you, you have a lot of experience with, and learning how to use that in a bunch of different situations. That's what versatility is. So when you go to a lake, at some point y'all are gonna go to the St. Lawrence River. At some point you're gonna go to Okeechobee. You're gonna start traveling to a bunch of these different fisheries. And the unfortunate part, even with live in tournaments, is all you get to see is our result of all the work that we put in. Even on live TV, it looks like we just shoo, showed up, we started casting at that clump of grass, that dock, we just started using live scope, and we start, that's all you get to see. So much of where we fish is only because we have confidence in that bait, that technique, or whatever we're doing at the moment, and we simply take that and use it wherever we go. And you can do the same thing. When I look back on my own career, the baits that I'm good at using, that stuff came way back 30 years ago when I was fishing with my dad out here on Lake Hartwell, fishing night tournaments. The same bait is still working, and I use those same baits to catch fish from all the way to Canada to as far south as Texas and Florida. Same baits, same techniques. I might have a better hook and some better line, better rod and reels, but it's, it's the same concept. It's still working today. Be a specialist. We talked about that. Let's, let's jump to this, this first point. you already seen this, but I want to talk about why you don't want to do this. And number one, you got to get out of the habit of sending DMs, calling people, asking, what should I do? What should I do? What should I do? I got a tournament. What should I do? What should I do? That is a, that's a monster that you don't want to keep feeding. If you don't ever eventually learn how to watch what's going on around you, there, there's, there's no dead end road. If you just keep calling people, if you keep just DMing people to get information for your tournaments, when will that stop? 